House Long Waters, in terms of their size and importance in the history of the Crown Lands, is very minor, with them being mostly forgotten and hardly considered by most of the other houses and lords of the Crown Lands. They are currently sworn to House Baratheon of King's Landing, and as of yet we don't even know where their seat is, or what their banner looks like. However, there are some fan theories about what it could be, the leading one suggesting it could be the reversed colours of House Valarian. But despite House Longwaters' size and lack of deep history going back generations, their origin is among the most fascinating of the newer houses formed in the years after Egon's conquest. Also, strictly speaking, House Longwaters does in fact have a long and storied history, that of Old Valyria, House Targaryen, and House Valarian, even if most would not claim it to be theirs. But why could House Longwaters claim such prestigious and noble heritage if the house is so minor their banner is not even documented? Well, House Longwaters descends from bastardy of the ancient and powerful houses with the blood of Old Valyria, House Targaryen, and House Valarian. During the Targaryen Civil War, known as the Dance of the Dragons, the base-born dragon seeds Adam and Alan of Hull were legitimised as members of House Valarian by Rhaenyra Targaryen, as they were in desperate need of dragon riders. It was claimed by the mother of the boys, Marilda of Hull, that they had been fathered by Rhaenyra's first husband, Selena Valarian. However, the court fool Mushroom claims they were in fact the children of Lenor's father, Lord Corlys Valarian. The story goes that Lord Corlys had dared not to recognise the boys while his wife, Princess Rhaenys Targaryen, was still alive, and even after her death, he did not wish to sully her memory. However, by claiming the boys as his grandchildren, he was choosing to recognise them after a fashion in this way. What version of events is true is unclear, and we will likely never have the answer to it. But regardless, the eldest of these two boys, Adam, was designated the true heir of Driftmark, being descended via Lenor or Corlys. Adam fell in the Civil War at the Second Battle of Tumbleton, but his death proved the loyalty of himself and his brother to Rhaenyra, whom had lost trust in the dragon seeds after the portrayal of Hardhew Hammer and Ulf the White, who went over to the Greens during the First Battle of Tumbleton. Thus, with Adam dead, his younger brother Alan became the new heir to Driftmark, and will go on to succeed Corlys as Lord of the Tides in 139 AC, when Corlys died aged 79. Alan therefore became the head of House Valarian, and would play a key role during the regency and reign of King Aegon III Targaryen, being dubbed the Oaken Fist for his daring and heroic deeds, among them fighting in the Stepstones and dealing with Dalton Greyjoy and his Ironborn Raiders. Arguably, his most important contribution to the history of Westeros was the return of Prince Viserys, future King Viserys, from captivity in Lys after he was taken during the Dance of the Dragons and believed to be dead for many years. He would serve as master of ships under King Daron I Targaryen and contributed greatly during his conquest of Dawn. He also spent much time fighting pirate lords, all before disappearing at sea later in life. Alan had married Lady Baylor Targaryen, the daughter of Daemon Targaryen and Lena Valarian in the year 132 AC. The relationship was said to be loving, but with initially much opposition to the match. They had two children, a girl named Lena and a boy whose name is not yet known to us. While we do not know the details as to how Alan and Bailey's relationship so severely broke down, it appears it did. Sometime before the year 171 AC, it is said that Alan fell in love with Princess Elena Targaryen, the youngest daughter of King Aegon III Targaryen and Queen Daenerys Valarian, meaning she was Baylor's own half-niece. Much of the details of their relationship are not known to us, but it did result in two children being born to them that Elena named John and Jane Waters, Waters being the name for noble bastards from the Crown Lands. Given the vague nature of the source material, it is not known whether Alan ever actually knew about his bastards, or whether the children were born after he left on his final voyage, from which he never returned. We also don't know much about the reaction of Baylor Targaryen. Elena Targaryen would later go on to marry Lord Ossifer Plum, Lord Ronald Penrose, and Sir Michael Manwoody, giving Ossifer a son, and Ronald, one son and two daughters. But despite the marriage of their mother and the birth of trueborn children to her, her bastard children with Alan were not forgotten, as after all, they were royal bastards with the blood of both House Targaryen and House Valarian. It must also be recalled this was all before the time of Egon the Unworthy and his numerous great bastards, 
some of whom would forever sully the idea of royal bastards. Despite his bastardy, John Waters went on to become a great and famous knight in his own right and was generally well liked and respected. We know very little about his sister Jane and what became of her, but it is likely she was offered the same respect as John and perhaps was married off to a landed knight or minor lord, because to a minor house, a royal bastard is still, well, a royal bastard and a valuable asset to have. John's son, whose name is yet unknown to us, went on to become a well-respected knight like his father, as the son born to John was in fact the legitimate child of John and his as of yet unknown wife, he left the tainted bastardy behind him and added long to his name to show this. While they would remain a very minor house, with little power, with their ties to House Targaryen and Valerian being forgotten over time, they do still exist post Robert's rebellion, as one of their descendants, Renifer Longwaters, would later serve his distant Baratheon kin as chief under jailer at the dungeons below the Red Keep in King's Landing by the time of the main book series. The way in which Renifer acts around Jaime Lannister suggests that Jaime is not aware of the Longwaters' dragon blood. While we don't have any official description of the members of House Longwaters, it is speculated that given that both John and Jane's parents have Valyrian features, that they were likely to have been passed down to their children and possibly throughout the generations, depending on how their descendants married which means walking around the halls of the Red Keep during the main books, there could be this small vestige of the lost era of House Targaryen and Valarian. Mm -hmm.